the official position of the American government, make no mistake, is that Taiwan is a part of China. Wink. That's it. I'm saying it. What is this? The Economist, China v. Taiwan is age-restricted? Why? If countries were people, the relationship between China, America, and Taiwan would be a love triangle like no Like Hawaii to the USA? No, not even. It's like if Texas, if Texas uh, used to, like, the Confederate States used to rule America, okay, and they were pretty fucking brutal, and then there was a, there was like a, like a, like a union revolution, and then also a massive war on top of that, and massive, uh, and, and, you know, massive war crimes that were occurring, and then the, uh, the, the, the Confederate States of America just basically seceded and were able to have their own thing separately, and they still laid ownership. They still originally laid claim to the entirety of America, and the Union kept growing and growing as a superpower around the planet, and then inevitably all of the other countries that were primed against the United States of America decided, actually okay, never mind, we are no longer acknowledging that, like, the Confederate States is the real America. We're now acknowledging, uh, and Texas being, like, the remainder Confederate State that, like, lost the war, basically was able to secede regardless, but was still laying claim to the entirety of America and maybe even fucking Canada, okay? And then all of America's enemies around the world were saying, you know, no, that's actually the real uh, America. Texas is the real America. And then inevitably... They were like, all right, never mind. We're reversing that. The, the Union is the real America. Texas is not the real America. But we're still going to keep giving Texas as many weapons as possible so they can maintain the, the Confederacy as like a, like a stronghold against uh, Union America, the United States of America, uh, and, and constantly have that as a cudgel, constantly have that as like a like wield the, the uh, existence of the Confederate States or uh, the existence of Texas as a Confederate state uh, to the existence of the United States of America. Texas is his own country in almost every Texan's head. Hassan, you can't get through to them. But would you admit that despite Texas' horrible past in this hypothetical, they've normalized and aren't crazy anymore? Oh, absolutely. So the other part of this is also that Texas originally is, like, very fascist, okay? Texas as a Confederate state is originally, like, insanely fascist, really fucked up, really bad. And then somewhere along the line... They decide, okay, we gotta, we gotta like be better, okay? They do democratic elections, and they slowly but surely, uh, you know, have like a normal process and become like a real country, rather than, uh, rather than like the 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 ridiculous like military dic uh, dictatorship that it used to be, like a fascist dictatorship it used to be. That's it. In the eyes of the United States of America, at that point, um, Texas is seen as a threat to its existence. And like every single person in Texas is pretty much like literally this. You wouldn't think that like right now in the way that you view America, you wouldn't think that like people in Texas are something different. You would say that they're American and ethnically they are American, but they are a separate state. That's it. Jenks going off. Low how is doing this debate right now. What debate? No other. China claims Taiwan as its own, but with America's support, Taiwan has been able to fend off the mainland's advances. I miss you. China! No! Say yes to Taiwan! We are an <laughs> independent country. We have the military and, and we have elections. But as China becomes stronger, it's also becoming more impatient. If China tries to take Taiwan by force, it could lead to war with America. These are two nuclear-armed countries. It's kind of an unimaginable horror, but it is a risk. And, you know, maybe sooner than we think. Taiwan is located just 100 miles off the Chinese coast. But it's not just the Taiwan Strait that separates them. The island's officials... I want to run that back one more time so people understand because maybe some people forget this, but like technically the water rights. Taiwan is located just 100 miles off the Chinese coast. However, 
The closest point between Taiwan and China is literally a mile, one mile. Therefore, the airspace is intertwined, okay? So just uh, something to consider whenever you're talking about, uh, whenever you're talking about, like, uh, China's entering Taiwanese airspace because they do do military operations. But, like, uh, I was listening to, I think it might have been the NPR this morning, and they were talking about the top of the hour ad break and how people in Taiwan don't see it, but people in China do. And that people in Taiwan should actually subscribe for $5 or for free with the Twitch Prime to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Yeah. Of course, like I said, you can also always get gifted a sub if you're lucky. That's another way to avoid the top of the hour ad break, too. Here's the three minute ad break now. No, I'm pro China, but they do fly around and in towards the island. They map courses are pretty telling. No, 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 for sure. I'm saying I agree with you. But one of the other things that happens, for example, is like they launch like a satellite. Um, they launched a satellite the other day. China did. And it still triggers uh, uh, Taiwanese air defense alarms, apparently. And the reason for why things like that happen is because like their airspaces are, are basically intertwined. Anyway, let's continue. But it's not just the Taiwan Strait that separates them. The island's official status is a hotly contested issue. For people in Taiwan and for most of the world, Taiwan is an independent country. But as far as the Chinese government is concerned, Taiwan is a renegade province which must be reunified with China. For the past 70 years, the threat of American military intervention has ensured that didn't happen. There has been a long-standing agreement. China has claimed that the United States is destabilizing. I don't know why they never talk about, like, okay, when, when Maoist third world is Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger normalized relations with China because they wanted to do permanent first world genocide. Okay. They said that China, the People's Republic of China, and not ROC, the Republic of China, Taiwan, was the real China. Leading up to that, prior to that uh, normalization, Taiwan, by American standards, despite being the group of individuals that were pushed into Taiwan, the island, and it was like the last bastion of, of uh, the fascist nationalist, uh, the, the fascist nationalist uh, uh, Chinese party were recognized formally as China. And at that time, and still is, it's more of a meme now, but uh, still to this day, the Republic of China is all of China, including Taiwan and even Mongolia. Okay. Like if you ask the Taiwanese, like old school, old school motherfuckers in Taiwan, they believe they own the entirety of China, okay? I mean, this situation is complicated by the fact that, that Han Chinese aren't native to Taiwan. There are Taiwanese indigenous who are Austronesian, Han Chinese, Ben Shengren, who arrived centuries ago, and the Han Chinese, Wai Shengren, who moved there along with the KMT after World War II. It is to some extent a settler colony. Barely any countries think Taiwan is on its own. Yes, America doesn't think Taiwan is an independent nation. America acts like Taiwan is an independent nation, but technically that, that normalization agreement meant that Taiwan was actually Chinese Taipei, was a part of China, mainland China, okay? But America, however, turned around and did something that they call strategic ambiguity. To the layman, strategic ambiguity is just lying, okay? That's it. I mean, there, there's no, I'm sorry, it's just lying. Like, it's telling China, it's telling China that you are, are actually, you know, respecting their sovereignty and, and saying that, yeah, yeah, Taiwan is actually Chinese Taipei, but then also consistently uh, giving uh, Taiwan weapons and, and uh, propping Taiwan up and saying that uh, Taiwan is independent on the side. It is technically just lying and not following on the agreements, but... The official position of the American government, make no mistake, and that's precisely why, like, Anthony Blinken will every now and then come out and be like, it's one China, is that Ch Taiwan is a part of China. Okay? Wink. That's it. That's why so many neoliberals who don't understand this for some reason, but are, like, primed into hating China, will oftentimes get mad even at Anthony Blinken when he comes out and says something along the lines of, we believe that Taiwan is a part of China, is one country, okay? Is one country, wink. 
and they get so mad. They're like, tanky Anthony Blinken? What the hell? What the hell is this? Why is he a tanky? Does he even know about Xinjiang? What's happening? Anyway, there's something to consider, which they didn't mention here in this situation. Realizing peace in the Taiwan Strait. The expectation is that America is at a minimum the security guarantor that if China invaded, they should expect the U.S. 7th Fleet to turn up very soon, and that could be a war. This precarious standoff is a consequence of the unique role Taiwan has played in China's divided history. At the end of the Second World War, the defeated Japanese, who had occupied Taiwan for 50 years, were forced to give up control. Taiwan was handed back to the Republic of China, then a military dictatorship led by Chiang Kai-shek's Chinese Nationalist Party. But it was a short-lived union. Within months, China's civil war, which had been fought intermittently Whoa. since 1927, ignited once more. By the way, the U.S. ambassador to Taiwan is technically not a civil servant, but on leave from the State Department and vacationing in Taiwan. <laughs> That's funny. Thinking that the U.S. would come to Taiwan's aid if China invaded is so laughable. I don't, I don't know what the United States would do in that situation. I think that, you know, it, it's, it's good to have Taiwan as a thorn on China's side. But, like, there's a reason why we arm every single country in the region. You know what I mean? By 1949, Mao's Red Army had swept to victory. Deposing Chiang Kai-shek's military dictatorship. We'd uh, fund Taiwanese paramilitary groups, also bolster relationships with Vietnam, Philippines, Japan, and other countries that dislike China in the region and send nukes there. Yeah. And for we'd bring Susan Collins' level of concern in action? No, we would literally fucking send every country in that region into the slaughterhouse. It would be a Ukraine situation, 100%. And every step of the way, America would be championing Taiwanese independence and how gay Taiwan is and how not gay China is. And, like, it would be a proxy war, 100%. They'd be like, look at how gay Taiwan is. China wants to take over Taiwan because they're gay and progressive. And China hates how progressive Taiwan is. They hate it, okay? And then, and then yeah, they, they already have... Literally fucking weapons lined up, pointing at China around this entire area. We have a new nuclear submarine program with Australia. We recently uh, uh, brought back the Philippine, uh, the Philippines' uh, military bases. Like, forcing the former leader and around 1.2 million of his anti-communist supporters to retreat to Taiwan. To so the kind of. Okay, this part is actually pretty cool. Uh, let me let me run that back again. Sorry, what happened there? Former leading Chiang Kai-shek's military to victory. So, in October 1949, military dictator Chiang Kai-shek's Chiang Kai-shek is defeated by Mao's Red Army in the Chinese Civil War, and then retreats to Taiwan. Okay. Deposing Chiang Kai-shek's military dictatorship and forcing the former leader and around 1.2 million of his anti-communist supporters to retreat to Taiwan. To the kind of... So what do they do in Taiwan when they retreat there? Is there like any, any information on that? Like what, what, what comes after they retreat to Taiwan? Grand gentry and aristocracy of mainland China. Taiwan was not somewhere... So do you support the Houthis even though they literally reinstated chattel slavery in Yemen? That's why I support the Houthis, dog. I'm such a... Dude, you don't understand. That's like, that's my shit, dude. 50 month subscriber, Lord Ahsika. That's my, yeah. No, I think the greatest way to deal with um, slavery allegations is by actually nuking it. We should nuke Yemen. That way, no slaves. 50 month subscriber. There's no better way. There's no better way to end slavery than nuking the entire area. And then, I, I don't know, maybe you could do Neom 2 there. You know what I mean? Bring the Saudi developers in there. Build a second Neom, right? That's pretty fire. Luckily, the Saudis don't have any slaves. So, it's my, more, my conscience is clear. 
that when I make that uh, genocide work famously. I love nuking places for democracy. Or at least like doing a proxy genocide with a definitely not slave labor uh, utilizing state like Saudi Arabia. Which is suspiciously the only source I've seen thus far about the whole slavery thing that's going on in Yemen. Crazy thing about Chiang Kai-shek. I literally learned that Chiang Kai-shek was the good guy because he was capitalist and Mao was communist. Only learned later in life that he was a homicidal maniac and he definitely wasn't one of the good guys. Don't know how many other Americans in the chat learned, but I suspect it's similar. I don't think most Americans don't, e most Americans don't even know who the fuck that is. They just automatically assume, like, who was aligned with America? I'm sure whoever that guy is, I'm on board with, is what most people's approach to foreign policy is. Look, see, this guy goes, Mao was way, way worse. Mao was worse than, no, man. Like, no. No. That's crazy. Chang didn't famine all 1.2 million of his followers. All right, we're moving on. But they respected or liked at all. Guys, guys, Chang flooded entire villages and killed untold numbers of people just to slow Japanese advance. Guys, you don't understand. Like, like Hitler killed a lot of communists, okay? So technically, maybe he's not worse than uh, Stalin. Have you thought about that? Is kind of the argument you're making in this situation. You know that, right? Like, that's your, that's literally your argument. Stalin, after all, did famines. So maybe he's worse than Hitler is the argument that you're making in the situation. It's such a ridiculous fucking argument, dude. You, you must think that as well, right? H Hitler did kill a shit ton of communists, brother. <laughs> Mao personally went door to door and ate everyone's food. So like when you see, when you see the entire Chinese population in the People's Republic in mainland China, like celebrate Mao as a founding father akin to like how we do here in America with our founding fathers. Like, do you think they're all brainwashed or do you think that they still consider him to be an important figure? Like, or do you think that like the famines, like that he deliberately did to kill his followers, they just simply didn't recognize it. Like they don't understand that. Like, what do you think is going on there? Like, why do you think they like him? Like they were the victims Yes, they think they're brainwashed slash and or more stupid. Yeah, that's true. They are not white after all. North Koreans consider Kim Il-sung to be a god. Doesn't make him a good guy. First of all, that's not also, that's not true either. Like the idea that North Koreans genuinely think he's a god is ridiculous. Like you just fucking read, you read a BBC article. What are you talking about? No, I, I'm, I'm of the mindset that most people are very much familiar with like what is going on in their conditions. They have nothing to compare their conditions to, though. That chatter is popping off today. Let's continue. It is a backwater. And yet... Also, the comparison that, like, the Chinese population right now, with, like, full-blown access to the internet, okay, where they meet, like, Americans on a regular basis, for example, and, like, consistently collaborate with the rest of the world, the comparison between them not personally recognizing, uh, you know, Mao's failures or even the Chinese government that has openly stated uh, historically some of the, of the failures overall of the revolution and comparing that to the North Korean population's what you consider uh, uh, reverence and, and uh, assumption that like their f uh, founding father is a, is a god is additionally ridiculous. Like if you think that... Chinese people are just like North Korean people with the with the uh, relationship they have with the rest of the world. You're just a racist person who thinks, well, they have they look kind of similar, so they must have the same brain. Like there's no there's no way to square that hole other than you're just a fucking ginormous racist. <laughs> because the nationalist regime under Chiang Kai Shek had to go somewhere. The last place that they could go to was Taiwan. Mao. You think Chinese government is going to let them migrate easily? I've had international students talk their parents' companies having tough restrictions because of the government. Are we now saying that Chinese people can't emigrate? Chinese government doesn't let Chinese people immigrate to the United States? Really? This is the argument that we're at now? I'm going to lose my mind. Open your fucking eyes. Which one is it? Do we have Confucius Institutes and Chinatowns in every fucking city? And China is slowly taking over our real estate market? Or... Is, is uh, you know, the Chinese government really restrictive about immigration? 
and are actually super secretive and holding back, which one is it? Because, like, reactionary minds hold on to both of these ideas at the same time, which don't make sense. Like, there is no logic there. Yeah, there's CCP police stations. Apparently, in Chinese academic circles at the moment, there's pretty, there's a pretty serious debate on Mao and the Cultural Revolution and whether or not the results were worth it. Makes sense. Mao was preparing to invade Taiwan and crush the deposed leader. Wait, I mean, we, we got stunlocked. I want to see this. Taiwan. So we retreated to the kind of Taiwan. grand gentry and aristocracy of mainland China, Taiwan was not somewhere they respected or liked at all. It is a backwater. And yet, because the nationalist regime under Chiang Kai-shek had to go somewhere, the last place that they could go to was Taiwan. Mao was preparing to invade Taiwan and crush the deposed leader once and for all. But then war broke out on the Korean Peninsula. The communists had finally launched their undeclared all-out war of conquest. With the Pacific now the new front in the fight against communism, America formed an alliance with Chiang Kai-shek's regime and forced Mao to give up his plans for a Taiwan takeover. Mm -hmm. And they were the good guys. I mean, they are still the good guys. America, the good guys in every story. Definitely this one. Definitely across the board. From Formosa, Chang carries on his long and valiant effort to defeat the forces of communism. Emboldened by America's support, Chiang Kai-shek declared Taiwan as the one true Republic of China and vowed to return to retake the mainland. This is a really unusual situation. Everyone on both sides agreed that there was only one country called China. They just disagreed what it was. Was it a right-wing country called the Republic of China or a communist country called the People's Republic of China? The 1938 Yellow River flood was a man-made flood from June 1938 to January 1947 created by the Chinese National Army's intentional destruction of dikes, levees on the Yellow River. The first wave of floods hit the Zhongmu County on the 13th of June, 1938. The flood acted as a scorched earth defensive line in the Second Sino-Japanese uh, War. There were three long-term strategic intents. Firstly, the flood of the Henan safeguarded the Shanji section of the Long High Railway, the major northwest traffic where the Soviet Union sent their military spies to the Chinese National Army. That was crazy. Todd just yelled so hard. Secondly, the inundated land and railway made it difficult for the Japanese army to mobilize in the Shangji, thereby preventing them from entering the Sichuan Basin, where the wartime capital, Chung, uh, or Tark was yelling so hard, and the southwestern home front was located. Thirdly, the floods in Henan and Anhui crushed the tracks and bridges in the Beijing-Wuhan Railway, tianjin Puko Railway, and Longhai Railway. The flood achieved the above strategic intent. In particular, the Japanese Operation 5 never captured any of the places... Many of the officers in the Chinese National Army were familiar with the use of floods as the warlord Wu Peifu used it against them. What's the meaning of dikes in this sense? It's levees that stop... Uh, it's levees that uh, operate as, like, natural dams in controlling... Uh, in controlling the, the, uh, the flooding... Levy, not Levy, sorry. The immediate drowning deaths were estimated to range 30,000 to 89,000. Estimates of total deaths resulting from floods, famine, plague varied wildly. Two professional sources put it between 400 and 500,000. Much higher estimate. And a researcher's second historical archives of China, respectively, a much higher estimate of 893,000. Deaths given by the national government's relief statistics in 1948 was discredited for its unspecified methodology. The national government's relief statistics were even higher. Then the two early communist estimates in the 1950s, which put the total deaths at 407,000 and 500,000 respectively. However, subsequent communist sources generally upheld the 893,000 figure that portrayed the nationalist government as inhumane, as opposed to the 470,000, which would make the nationalist government not as inhumane. The figures of inundated land were exploited by nationalist propaganda. Initially, the nationalist government falsely claimed that the flood was caused by Japanese aerial bombing. Hence, the nationalists initially claimed... <coughs> 12 million peasants living on inundated land to boost anti-Japanese public sentiment. Bi Chun-Fu estimated that 5 million peasants were living on inundated land. Bi's figure was echoed by two early communist estimates in the 1950s, which estimated 6.1 million and 5 million, respectively. Although no longer fighting face-to-face, -face, 
Mao and Chiang Kai-shek were now in a battle for international recognition and legitimacy. Initially, Chiang Kai-shek's government held China's seat on the UN. Okay, even hearing it from The Economist probably makes it, helps you understand what I said, though, about, like, a Confederate state of Texas still maintaining that they own the entirety of the United States of America, right? Like, do you, do you get what I mean by, by the nationalist government led by Chiang Kai-shek thinking that they still maintain ownership over the entirety of China, even though they were pushed into and lost and pushed into Taiwan at that point? Security Council and was... It'd be like the Confederates running away to PR... Yes, yes, it would be more akin to Confederates running away to PR and like purging most of the people living in PR and even the other people, like the other non-Puerto Rican, but like otherwise American ethnicity people that were of communist uh, mindset were also murdered ruthlessly on top of that in order to create uh, a hegemonic Confederate attitude in Puerto Rico and then... Russia and China in this story are consistently funding uh, uh, the Puerto Rican Confederate state as like the real America. Recognized by many Western countries as the only Chinese government. Our great socialist fatherland is in a bright and splendid morning. But as Mao's China became of increasing strategic importance to America during the US-Soviet Cold War, Chiang Kai-shek's influence diminished. That's why we were laughing about how it's so incredibly cucked for Taiwan to be celebrating Henry Kissinger and saying he's like an incredibly important American diplomat. Because like he, that's the one group of people, like the Chinese government, is the only people that are able to say, you know, not so bad, Henry Kissinger, thank you. Because, like, really big, big game changer moment for, for China. You know, old Henry and, and uh, Nixon. In 1971, America allowed a UN resolution to recognize Mao's People's Republic as the one and only China. And after years of secret talks, in 1979, Washington shifted diplomatic recognition from Taiwan's capital, Taipei, to Beijing. The mainland would not allow two Chinas or one China and one Taiwan. They insisted on having one China. The no, that's what I was talking about. Mainland China likes Kissinger for this reason. Taiwan has to like Kissinger because they're cucked to America. But that's why... That's why mainland China likes uh, Henry Kissinger. I'm saying it's really funny that like Taiwan also has to act like they, they hold him to a high regard, even though he fucked them. One China principle became a bedrock of the communist regime. And most of the world no longer recognized Chiang Kai-shek. Also, I love, I love dummies. This guy's back. He says Henry Kissinger was based. He maintained U.S. hegemony for decades. If only we had a mind like that in power today. Yeah, dude, totally. Henry Kissinger of any other country would be laughed out of every room. There is no Henry Kissinger being held up uh, in high regard in any other country. It's just might is right. That's it. KMT leader tweeting out the condolences were peak cuck behavior. That's what I'm saying. It's like, imagine losing your status as the real China to this guy and then being like, so sick, thank you. ...government. Unofficially, however, there was still strong sympathy in the West for Taiwan, not least from its ex-partner, America. But it was no longer quite so outspoken about its affection. The Taiwan's Relations Act is both the strongest promise that America still makes to Taiwan, but also it falls a long way short of a full defense treaty and a full promise that America will definitely protect Taiwan no matter what. America's lack of commitment led Taiwan to find another way to stand on its own two feet, through economic growth. Taiwan's small agricultural economy had already undergone rapid industrialization. In the 1980s, its exports boomed. As economic growth surged on both sides of the Taiwan Strait, 
Taiwan and China let down their barriers. Initially, Taiwanese businesses set up factories on the mainland, reaping huge rewards. But as China's economy began to catch up, leaders in Beijing realized they'd found one way to break down Taiwan's resistance to merging with the mainland. It was the start of a long-term policy. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really fucked up how they did that through trade. Policy to woo Taiwan through economic influence. I hate, I hate when China is doing, I hate when China's doing trade with Taiwan and breaking down the boundaries of, of resistance to reunification. It's so much better when they're not unified. You know what I mean? Just like, just like the DPRK and, and South Korea. You know what I mean? I would hate it if there was any economic cooperation and that there was some kind of reunified uh, uh, Korea because that would be bad. I would hate that. Why would I hate that? Don't ask me that question, okay? You don't understand. It's just that would suck in general, okay? Yes, I do live in Iowa. Yes, I think that uh, reunification for Korea and reunification for China would be bad. Don't ask me why. Shut the fuck up, okay? Shut up. I have an opinion on this. And because I'm an American living in Iowa, my opinion on this stands, okay? The Chinese government saw that this is a phenomenally... Meanwhile, do not tell me that the Dakotas need to reunify because I will fucking fight tooth and nail. That is not... I am just in it because I don't like unification. You don't understand. At first, you thought it was a strategic, ge it was a strategic interest. Now you're realizing that I just hate reunification. I'm a big balkanizer, okay? Balkanize China further, as a matter of fact, okay? Xinjiang, separate. East Turkestan, boom, okay? Tibet, free Tibet. Back to the Dalai Lama, boom. Russia should be also uh, ripped into shreds. Balkanize everybody else useful opportunity to make the two economy so integrated that it will be economically suicidal for any government in Taiwan to try to uh, come into a kind of confrontation with China, which will therefore require the government in Taiwan to accept some form of unification with China. And so the Chinese Communist Party suddenly started to drop its kind of implacable hostility to everything to do with Taiwan. You saw direct flights, direct ferries, direct shipping, and a huge interconnection. But while economic ties tightened, cultural divisions between Taiwan and the mainland deepened. Political reforms in the 1980s led to the birth of the opposition party, the Democratic Progressive Party, or DPP, who supported an independent Taiwan. Just two years later, progressive Li Denghui, or Mr. Democracy, as he would come to be called, became the island's first Taiwanese-born leader. National Assembly elections in 1991 were hailed as Taiwan's first true democratic elections. Within a decade, Taiwan became a full-blown true democracy. And people in Taiwan are extremely proud of their democracy. And that is something which helped to define their sense of identity. Hey. Say no to China. Alongside democratization came a growing desire for a separate identity, much to the dismay of leaders in Beijing. In 1996, China used its military might to threaten Taiwan. And so famously in 1996, they launched these missile tests uh, off the coast of Taiwan to try and front... Li Tonghui was a huge Japan simp. There is like a very weird... I guess it's not so weird because they're like literally America. It's an American vassal state. There is a... There is a there, I feel like Taiwan is in a permacucked position because, like, I do find it rather strange to so openly be a colony and, like, defend Japan, like, in its current state. Both because America wants that and because I guess you're just cucked. I don't know. My Chinese friends actually all really respect Taiwan. Some of them have visited Taiwan and actually really appreciate the culture, but they all feel as if Taiwan is just an extension of China but separate. Yeah. Taiwan was treated relatively better by Japan than other colonies during the World War II model colony. 
I don't know how people can pretend they are like different people now. They're all Han Chinese. No. Yeah. When you say that, though, people will turn around and go, that's blood and soil politics. Like you're doing blood and soil politics. Like that's fascism or something. I don't know. Yeah. Even South Korea, which is also practically a U.S. vassal state, has the dignity not to suck up the Japan. <laughs> South Koreans. But South Korean governments, I think that's a little bit different. South Koreans, yes. South Korean governments, not so much. But if there's one group of people that despise the Japanese, I would say it's the Chinese for sure. Frighten the Taiwanese people into not voting for Lee Dong Hui. Wait, what did he say? Okay, so they did the... In 1996, they launched these missile tests. Uh, hey, is Turkey a vassal state as well since 1947? I mean, yeah, Turkey is a Turkey is in many ways. Yes, as, as every NATO country is. Yeah. What do you think? You think I'm going to say no to that? Off the coast of Taiwan to try and frighten the Taiwanese people into not voting for Lee Dong Hui, who was, uh, in their view, too much of a kind of pro Taiwanese figure. I think it is a very bad mistake on their part to put the impact area so near to Taiwan. I deplore that decision on their part. America responded with the biggest display of military might in Asia since the Vietnam War. This made China aware of how difficult it would be to stop American forces assisting Taiwan. But China's attempts to meddle in Taiwanese affairs continued. Despite claims it wanted a peaceful reunification with Taiwan, in 2005, China passed an anti-secession law authorizing the use of force should Taiwan formally declare independence. That was meant to kind of intimidate the Taiwanese people, but it does intimidate some people, but it also makes the idea of unification with China all the more unattractive and, and just kind of plain weird to younger Taiwanese people. With the younger generation increasingly alienated from China, more recent attempts by Taiwan's government, even to just forge closer economic ties, have met with opposition. In 2014, the Sunflower Movement occupied Parliament to protest against a free trade deal with China. <laughs> well. For most people in Taiwan, they think that China has every right to have a one China principle. It just cannot include us and they simply will not accept the prospect of being part of a very hard authoritarian Leninist political system, whatever the economic benefits. So up to this point, the Chinese approach of using economic integration to achieve political unification has failed. Since the 1990s, a growing proportion of people... In terms of Taiwanese identity, I do think these recent figures are fairly interesting. Today, less than 3% of Taiwanese people identify as only Chinese, while about 30% identify as both Chinese and Taiwanese. More than 60% say they're only Taiwanese. As far as I understand... The younger generations in Taiwan are less, uh, uh, they're more independent and want to be not a part of China at all versus, um, versus the, the, um, like the opinion of an older generation that focuses on stability, but also don't want conflict. The young generation wishes the status quo would last forever. Yes, the prevailing the prevailing attitude, the, the prevailing attitude always is don't rock the boat. Like it's definitely more so uh, folk, like the majority still want, if given the possibility, an opportunity for independence. However, the overwhelming majority beyond that, no matter what, is interested in maintaining the current relation. Isn't this more about nationality identification than ethnicity of racial? I'm sure they still think that their ethnicity is Han Chinese, even though they think their nationality is Taiwanese. Yes. Is there some basic pros, cons of Taiwan just being independent? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess like, what is this? Kai Sinat going to Taiwan end of this month to see Ray? Hit up Daff or Joey Chaotic for a tour? Pog? What? Kai Sinat is about to skibbity riz Taiwan? Into reunification with China? That's crazy. Is Kai Sinat about the is Kai Sinat about the Phantom Tax Taiwan? 
to ensure that the status quo becomes permanent with reunification? High is the red line. Mainland will invade to stop how show of support. No, Nancy Pelosi going to Taiwan is one thing, but Kai Sinat going to Taiwan, that's, that is a red line. As a young person in Taiwan, what I currently observe is that every political party is averse to being ruled by China. The difference lies in whether or not to cooperate with China. The Democratic Progressive Party tends to align more closely with the United States and Japan, while the Kumatang leans towards seeking trade relations with China. Yes, this is what I have read as well, as far as I understand. Um, which is weird to think about when you think about the Kumatang, but um, <laughs> Kai Sinat's coming to Taiwan. It's Kaiwan now. What do you think about that? Taiwanese chatter? Yeah, it's Kaiwan now. But the W pronounced. Could Kai riz up G to stabilize relations? Maybe. Yeah. Kai Sinat is going to re-skibidify Gyatwan and the, and the People's Republic of Ohio with a Sigma Riz. He's going to Taiwan. He has a friend there. The People's Republic of Kaiwan. Kai Sinat says Lil Nas X can't come to Taiwan. Kai Sinat doesn't realize how gay Taiwan is, dude. Taiwan is the Lil Nas X of, of nations. Okay? What is happening? Does he not realize that? They're so gay, bro. <laughs> uh, okay, let's continue with this video. People in Taiwan see themselves as Taiwanese rather than Chinese. These views helped Tsai Ying Wen, the pro independence DPP candidate, win election in 2016 as president of Taiwan. <laughs> and just three years later, events 440 miles southwest would create even more support oh, for Hong Taiwanese Kong. independence. In 2019, hundreds. I love when, like, they show police brutality from China and they're like, look at how fucking nuts this shit is. And then it's like, have you seen our country? Stop saying banned, dude. What do you mean? I've shown police brutality and protests, like as a part of my profession in the United States of America with infinitely worse conditions than what you just saw. Hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets of Hong Kong and battled with police to protest against Chinese encroachments on Hong Kong's free- It's also funny because like every single person that was like free Hong Kong and like talking about different methods of like resisting Chinese oppression in Hong Kong were also like, you should kill every Black Lives Matter protester. Like, how did, the, how did that turnaround occur so fast? Freedoms. For many in Taiwan, including the president, it was a stark warning. The more that China shows its teeth and shows that it's not willing to tolerate even a semi-democracy in a place like Hong Kong, the more that the Taiwanese people think, what kind of promise of autonomy makes any sense for us. As voluntary unification looks increasingly remote, China has only its military might to fall back on. In 2020, the- Why can't you criticize China without somehow making it about America bad? Why can't you, why can't you ever fathom that like America does the exact same bad things that you lose your mind over China doing? Like, police oppression is police oppression no matter if it's a Chinese cop doing it or an American cop doing it. Sometimes, though, you know what the worst version of that is? When it's the Chinese police doing it in America. That's right. Chinatown, uh, Chinese police in every Chinatown, folks. Confucius Institutes. Let me tell you, folks, Confucius Institutes have taken over our government, okay? And they're doing police brutality the Chinese way. Okay, you say both are bad, but they defend America. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Like, I don't think it's appropriate for the Chinese cops to just, like, knee the necks of the Hong Kong protesters, okay? I thought that was a given. The difference, however, is that when I compare it to America, I'm not saying this is a good thing. I'm saying this is a bad thing, okay? You, on the other hand, I think, look at that and go, well, I in instinctively want to defend America and say that, like, the Chinese version of such is much worse. It's not just the young people. My 50 plus parents are anti-China. TVBS reports Air Force News every day. Not as many people uh, know, but we Taiwanese people have our own dialect called Hokkien. Wait, really? Do you think we will reach a point with America rectifying their sins and normalizing relations with at least China? Or does North Korea have a better chance? What? 
Someone said, no, Hokkien is from mainland China. I've never heard of this. I did not know that there was a different dialect at all. Bro, Hokkien is spoken in the mainland too. Every every Chinese chatter is jumping at this other chatter. Hokkien is spoken in Fujian, a.k.a. where 99% of Taiwanese came from. Hokkien is just more of Chinese settler violence on Taiwanese culture. Have you considered the American police have sexier gear and have the best uniforms? This is true. They are very, they're closer to like a full-blown military, which is always better. The more militarized the police force, the better. I think, I, look, look, I don't know if reunification will happen with China and Taiwan or North Korea and South Korea, but I do know that everybody unifies at the top of the hour, okay? You unify and you see an ad break. Now, of course, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free, okay? What I mean is I, we don't have good relations with China right now. Will it get better? I got people hating on me in the DMs now. I want to clarify. The Chinese government released a propaganda video that appeared to show the Chinese armed forces conducting attacks on the U.S. military base in Guam. It was a sign that China is considering the use of force far afield in order to prevent America coming to Taiwan's aid. Is America still able to deter China? Does the People's Liberation Army fear that it would lose a war and that America would turn up to defend Taiwan? That's now in real doubt. These are two nuclear armed countries. It's kind of an unimaginable horror. It should be impossible to imagine this not ending peacefully. But it is also impossible to imagine this Chinese government they love black culture, still raised against black people, aware. Yeah, that's not very different than, you know, how America, Americans also consume black culture, but then hate black people. That's ironically more American culture. What you just described is like American culture times two. Allowing Taiwan to drift away. I'm David Rennie, Beijing Bureau Chief of The Economist. To read our recent briefing on how Guam helps protect Taiwan. Bro, chatters are going crazy. Poof, we will reach Brussels in three days in our special operation to cleanse them of the EU Nazi junta and free Belgian people. Bro, what happened? What were you yelling about? Are you getting cooked out there or what?